Hello and welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. I'm your host, Gabe Peterson, and this is the place investors go to gain actionable advice, learn about current market trends, and hear war stories from other professional investors out there in the field today. Before we get started, I have two quick housekeeping items for you. First, if you like this episode, we would very much appreciate a like, subscribe, and share. It is the best way to support the show and keep it running far into the future. Second, if you're a new investor looking to get started in real estate or an experienced investor looking to take your investing to the next level, I've created an ebook just for you that will cover how to find deals that are actually deals, how to finance those deals with little to no money down, and how to exit those deals for maximum value. On top of that, I throw in an insane amount of free bonuses that you'll have access to once you buy the ebook. All I charge is our admin costs to keep this show running. So if you're serious about real estate investing and want to create both active and passive income as an investor, head on over to the website at therealestateinvestingclub.com and click on the button that says, get the ebook in the upper right-hand corner to grab yourself a copy. With that said, let's dive right in. Today, we have a very special guest with us ready to drop some investor knowledge on you. So buckle up, grab your pen and paper and enjoy the ride. All right. We are back with another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. Today we have with us Ari Rastigar, the Oracle of Austin per the Forbes magazine, amazingly. And that is only the second Oracle I know. So that has to be a good omen here to have Ari on the show. Ari is the founder and CEO of Rastigar Property Company, has earned a reputation as a thought leader in real estate with his innov innovative technology-driven investment strategies. I am super excited to have Ari here on the show. He has a lot to talk about. I was just looking at his very sexy looking um, commercial properties building down in looks like Dallas. So Ari, thank you very much for hopping on the show today. Pleasure to have you. Hey, thanks for having me. I love the show. I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. As I was saying before we hopped on, um, we always start with stories. It sounds like you have a good one. So why don't you take us back to the beginning? How'd you get started in real estate in the first place? Yeah, um, look, it's um, if it depends on how far we go back. Um, I've always loved, you know, buildings, even as a kid, like, you know, I was very close to my grandfather, um, who immigrated from Iran, um, after the Iranian Revolution, you know, my my dad and um, uncles and aunt were studying here in Austin. And actually, I was actually born and raised here in Austin. Uh, and, and you know, I remember walking with my grandfather, who was actually a physician and a psychiatrist in Iran. And, you know, they didn't, we didn't share similar uh, viewpoints. So they basically killed our whole family uh, in oh, Iran. So they, so they, well, it, it, look, it, it was obviously a tragedy, but, you know, many Iranians that are here in America share the, a similar story, a similar plight. And it's, you know, it, it is what it is. And we're the greatest country in the world and you know god works in mysterious ways so i always look at the world as life is happening for me not happening to me yep, um yep. but you know on the real estate side you know i wanted to be like my grandpa you know and wanted to kind of you know do what he did he was a doctor and i specifically remember him saying you know you, you love all these buildings and you know they're not making any more land and um i want you to be a businessman you know and um my father's an attorney and he basically said to me, I didn't want to go to law school. And um, I really didn't even have the money. I had a scholarship to go. It's another story. And he said, after, you know, you become a lawyer, you can be an exotic dancer for all I care. But you're going to be a lawyer <laughs> first. You know, so, Thanks, so I didn't become a doctor. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Uh, but my, it was my grandpa's dream, you know, to, you know, for me to own these buildings. Because he saw, I think, how enamored I was by them. We'd walk through mm -hmm. streets in downtown Dallas. and. Yeah. Um, in Austin, and I was he always picked looking up on your own interest and, there. I, yeah, I think he did, you know, and I, I don't know. In, I remember it more of him telling me that, mm -hmm. you know, you need to buy these buildings and be a landowner, and, you know, that's how you create wealth. And um, I was an English major in undergrad, you know, so in my day job, I'm a risk manager. You know, that's really what I do. I manage risk for a living for our institutional investors. And our investors are 
the biggest pension funds in the world, insurance companies, family offices. Obviously, we have a high, you know, big book of high net worth investors as well, celebrities, athletes, you name it. We run the gamut, right? Um, but I got really enamored by it as a kid. And then um, I went to Texas A&M undergrad after uh, flipping burgers at Johnny Rockets Pizza in hey, high school. Johnny Rockets, nice. Johnny Rockets, shout out to Johnny Rockets. Thank you very much for making me wear that hat and that bow tie and singing that dang Frank Sinatra, My Kind of Town. One day I, actually, I flipped the ketchup bottle. I actually bottle. started there too, so uh, I, I love the Did you work there, really? I did, yeah. Is I that did true? The whole no, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, everything. Remember we'd sing to the ketchup bottle and do the whole thing? Yeah, so my, my song was My Kind of Town by Frank Sinatra. Nice. And so when that song came on, I sang to the thing and whatever. One time I flipped the ketchup bottle up and did it tie the top and spread the whole <laughs> room with everywhere. Yeah, with, with ketchup everywhere. But anyways, another story. I digress. <laughs> um, and so, you know, so after two community colleges, delivering pizzas at Double Dave's through college at Texas A&M, I was an English major. And so really in my heart, I'm an artist. You know, and I've, I've been very deep into technology and in, in the real estate side, we marry technology, pop culture and real estate together um, because I'm technically the oldest millennial. So <laughs> I have, so it, it's just, just a weird thing to say. So I'm kind of the API plugin between okay. kind of the older generation of, you know, how they think institutionally. And we're a very, very institutional shop, as you know, and, um, you know, the nine figure balance sheet, you know, all that stuff. But um, I... I realized when I was in law school, there was an exception to every rule. My dad said that I had to go to law school, but he didn't say that I couldn't start my own company in law school. <laughs> Loophole, perfect lawyer right there. <laughs> Loophole, right? Yeah, it was, well, it was exception. Every rule you learned that day one of you know law school, right? So this is 2005, and I was driving back and forth to school in St. Mary's. Um, they gave me a scholarship to go out of A&M, graduated top of my class as an English major, and always loved books, always loved reading, always was very curious, you know, and I would just drive by this stuff, this, you know, these houses, and I saw the same name um, on a lot of these, you know, little realtor signs, and, and, and I would see drive by for sale, lot for sale, sold, 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 and, and like, I just kept seeing this. And something visceral happened inside of me where I was like, wow, like maybe this is the time. So I used all my scholarship money, borrowed $3,000 for my friend's dad that I went to college with and literally showed up at that guy's office. His, his name is Mitch Dugan. He's still my friend to this day. You know, his kids are my friends. Uh, this was back, like I said, 2005. So, I mean, this was, you know, quite some time ago. And I said, look, I don't have much credit. I or any, I have some money, I'll buy the lots. And we're talking about eighty thousand dollar interim construction loan selling the houses for 115 grand. And you know what leads up to 2007, 2008, and you know how the world came to an end. So the financing was great. So I said, look, I want to learn. Obviously, you're the biggest name in this little area where we lit where it was outside of San Antonio in Spring Branch, Texas. So I had to drive about 30 minutes to get to school every day because I wanted to live next to the, what I was developing. So he agreed, and I was on the build site every morning at 5 a.m., you know, pouring concrete, putting up sheetrock, doing electrical, mechanical, plumbing, you know, just shadowing, you know, everybody. I uh, definitely shocked myself a few times and have some scars and cuts and calluses to prove it. Um, <laughs> but I said, look, I want to learn. I want to learn how to do this. And we did one, sold it, did two, sold it. And, um, you know, getting into 2008, we were on our way to building a pretty substantial residential development company. And then they pulled all of our loans. Yep. And him being the great guy that he is, you know, kind of gave me this option. He's like, well, you work your butt off. I'll give you all your money back. You can pay back the 3000 bucks to the, you know, the gentleman that loaned you the money. I'll take on all the loans. He had the liquidity of the money. He's a wealthy guy, you know, um, and we'd become really close and I become really close with his family and it doesn't matter. We were close. We were good mm -hmm. friends. And yep. um, I had done some things for him personally that meant a lot to him. And he did a lot of things for me. And uh, he said, look, kid, here's your hat. Good credit. Paid. Here's your money back. 
I thought I was going to be worth four or five million bucks coming out of law school, which for a kid that was getting three dollar tips, you know, a year before, you know, might as well have been I might as well have been Jeff Bezos, like in my mind, <laughs> to zero. And so my wrestling coach's cousin, I say quote unquote cousin because they're Italians, was the head of all conduit lending at Credit Suisse at the time. Oh, wow. And so when I got out of law school and took the bar, I sat with my coach who I'm still really close with. I was a terrible wrestler too. Um, but <laughs> anyways, I, I did wrestle, but um, he introduced me, he introduced me to him and I had actually met him several times over the years um, through wrestling practice. He was a big cowboy fan, although he was in New York um, and he moved me to New York city and put me in the room with the biggest names in the world, you know, and really believed in me and, um, gave me my shot. And uh, after spending about five or six years on Wall Street, I kind of had the impetus to, um, to do it on my own. And one of the investors that I covered uh, while I was there in New York, uh, I got very close with, he passed away recently, and um, he's always in my prayers, beautiful man um, out of Houston, Texas, you would have loved him. I mean, just an angel of a human being. And, um, you know, he helped me get the firm off the ground, you know, loan me some money to kind of help me get some stuff together and, you know, paid him back within a year or so. And, um, we're five, six years running and awesome. The rest is, the rest is history, but, um, <laughs> yeah, it took a lot of kicks in the teeth. My book comes out in June, which is called the gift of failure. And it, okay. and it details a lot of these things of all the blunders that kind of happened along along the way. But like I said, in my heart as a real estate guy, you know, I'm kind of have these two different compartmentalized side. One side is a data analytics, stress testing psycho on just <laughs> understanding the numbers, understanding population migration, looking at artificial intelligence, looking at machine learning, using all the data I can have, running Monte Carlo scenarios, surrounding myself with believable people, to be able to come up with the right answer, extricating the ego, um, you know, to come up with the right decisions. But this other side of me is an artist. Mm. You know, I always I see myself as an artist. You ask me, what am I? What am I? What is Ari as a man, aside from being a father, you know, and you know, being a husband, you know, being a you know, the human, I'm an artist. Gotcha. You know, I'm I read I read constantly. I, you know, they make fun of me in the office that I read anywhere from five to 15 books a week. And I have been for the past, for the past 20 years. Right. And that's the English major. My parents were both readers. My mom always had a book in her hand growing up. My stepdad always had a book in his hand. My father always had a book in his hand. We were reading family. I mean, it was just, and so I, I've always been a reader. Yep. Great. Yeah. Just, just great surroundings in that regard. And, um, so yeah, the other side, but the other side of me is art. So when it comes to architecture, you mentioned that building on McKinney Avenue that we're designing. You know, these are buildings that I've sketched out. Like I'm not a really good, you know, painter or drawer per se. We have in-house architecture here that are at there. I think they're absolute geniuses. The head of architecture has been my friend since we were 10 years old. Um, but I love building beautiful things and mm -hmm. seeing and building community and, you know, walking the spaces. And it wasn't long ago, I was living in an apartment. I mean, we grew up in apartments or little small little houses. Like we didn't have anything growing up, you know, like I say that, you know, kind of embarrassingly because we were fortunate enough to be born in the United States of America and have all these great things that are, you know, there's a lot of people that are suffering in this world. So I got very, very lucky to be born in America. We born in Austin, Texas. Um, you know, so, but, you know, but we had, we didn't have that much, you yeah. know, we made it, we made it work. Uh, and, but designing interiors, you know, yep. branding, marketing, understanding color schemes, understanding like the, the walkability, what's the customer experience and just being obsessed with, you know, what is that like from yeah, an artistic so, so your standpoint? Modern sounds like your modern self is really trying to bring those two sides of, of you together. The data side, the one that it is. is really important. It and it's congruency. Yep. And it's congruency. And so yep. at our heart, we're a data company. At the mm. heart of Brastigar, we are a data analytics, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, data company that also does real estate. Okay. 
So we're and real wanna, estate purists on one side. Yep. So I'm going to jump in here. I, um, I want to get into what you guys are doing now. It sounds awesome. I love, I mean, you talked about data, marrying data and art together. I love that you're, you're and pop so culture focused and, pop, and culture. pop culture. All right. I want to, I want to know how that um, comes into play. Um, and I love that you're so focused on data because I feel like every real estate company should be before we get into that though. I kind of want to, you know, you, we've already gone through your past. And so I want to put a, a stopper on that and just kind of review because um, a few things jumped out to me when you were talking and I've seen this happen so many times on this podcast. Um, it's kind of a theme is that people that get into real estate, the ones that really get far that really, you know, take their, their company to the next level are the people who had really good influences, really good mentors. And, you know, you mentioned your grandpa who kind of saw that spark in you at the very beginning um, he saw that's what you wanted to do. And so he kind of pushed you in that direction. And, and, said, that's, and that's why his name is on the door. And I say his name because it's not mine because he reminded me all the time, put my name on the door. And don't forget, that's your great grandfather's name. That's your great great grandfather's name. So when you try to do all this Wall Street stuff, as he would say in his Iranian accent, he's like, you remember, <laughs> that's not your name. You know, <laughs> it's so, my name. Whatever. So. That's my name. And don't mess it, up my name. It wasn't even, I mean, your grandpa was one that was your first influence, the one that really got you started. And then you had and my that, dad and my dad, and your dad, obviously. Um, and then Mitch Dugan, another, another name, another person that kind of helped you along the line. Um, so I'm seeing so, that. I mean, the list goes on and yep. on and on. Anthony Orso, um, who was the head of Credit Suisse, who's the one that really brought me to Wall Street. Uh, I mean, the list goes on. I mean, like there is so, I've been so blessed. I cannot tell you with having unbelievable mentors yep. that did not need to give me the time of day and um, showed me a tremendous amount of love and a tremendous amount of grace. And, yep. uh, um, it's and that's something a, that I can't repay. That's a lesson. I mean, for anybody listening and watching, um, re really, it, it, the mentorship and anybody who's in your life, who's, be, who's able to push you in the direction, especially in real estate, um, they're worth more than anything that you can get. I mean, Ari, it sounds like you had, you know, grade A mentors, people that were already in there, your grandpa, he knew development. A, no, a plus, plus. I mean, if I tell you all the names, they're literally the biggest names in real estate in the world, bar none, heads of any major company that you can think of that comes to your head, whether it's Starwood, I mean, name the big ones. Those are my mentors and yep. friends, mm -hmm. you know, so I was very, very lucky, but I, got, I have to also say to the, to the listener, human mentorship is one thing, but my biggest mentors are books mm. and YouTube and you know podcasts and meaning like you can't you, you like you can't have that victim and how well i don't know anybody in real estate i live you know in a place that i don't this or that or you know whatever i don't know whatever you know limiting beliefs as tony robbins would say you know and i'm a big tony robbins guy i've had a life coach for 12 years that helps me you know stay focused on my goals and what i'm doing and um, I'm huge into health, massive, massive, massive down the rabbit hole into health and wellness. But, you know, my biggest mentors are books, period. Yeah. And, and it shadows, not to undermine the human element of mentorship, but you can go on Amazon right now and buy Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill or, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or, you know, just any, just Dale, you know, uh, how to win and influence people. Like there's just a list of the best books ever in the world on entrepreneurship. Simon Sinek starts with why just keep going down the list by the used version. The book is literally free and you pay three 99 for shipping and it comes to your house. So like, or YouTube, you want to learn real estate. You can go to MIT's YouTube channel and watch the greatest real estate teachers in the world, literally for free teach real estate. So, and I do that still to this day. Yep. So they're like literally sitting on my desk as we're talking is this book, the, the intelligent, intelligent re investor. Re investor, a book that Forbes published. I just, ironically, it's sitting here. And then obviously a picture of my family that's just sitting here as well. But I'm saying like, I'm still reading these books. Yep. Like I have a read on the broker dealer network right now, but this, these are the mentors and there's no excuse. So if and you I've want it, found, 
especially with reading um, and, you know, knowledge, it's more, I equate it to working out. Like you don't just do a really hard workout and say, okay, now I did it. Now, now I'm, now I'm it's like eating. I'll be fit for the yeah, rest oh, yeah. of the day. Oh yeah. I ate a salad today, so I'm shredded or like, right. like come on. Like right. this is, you have to be in love with the process. I tell people this all the time. Like, what do you mean? It's this, I'm like, David Goggins, you know, who David Goggins is. Mm hmm so David Goggins is the he's the, the he was a seal and runner motivational yeah, guy yeah, yeah. unbelievable like psychopath but brilliant like love him <laughs> to death he's just he runs like 100 mile marathons like without stretching like he's just out of his head but he's a genius i love him and he talks about exercising uh, he wrote a book recently that was phenomenal but you know he talks about you know how not only taking kind of responsibility for yourself but going to the gym is only one hour. Like, mm -hmm. so out of the 24 hours in a day, you put yourself in an uncomfortable situation. One 24th that you Worth feel it. a little bit of pain. <laughs> I mean, like it, you, you have to invest in yourself. And some of the premise of the gift of failure, my book is about you being your asset. You are the asset. Yep. And so all the information is there. And so I don't want to hear any excuses of, I don't know the head of Credit Suisse like Ari did. Well, you also didn't have a speech impediment and have to go to speech, you know, speech school for seven years to learn how to talk either. Like I did, yep. you know, like you didn't have is, to flip bur or like. Yep. And that, that is one lesson that I really want anybody listening, watching who, who if you're just getting into real estate, um, I don't want to, you know, focus on the people that Ari met, just that he did have people in his corner. And then he also had the books. These are things, two things that you can go do is just meet anybody in real estate. Ari was walking down the street. He saw all these signs of, um, of the realtor who's sold all the houses down the street. And he went and met him. You can do that. Anybody I literally showed up at his door. Yep. I literally just showed up to his office and knocked on the door. He said, who are you? I'm like, well, I saw your name on the wall. Can you talk? And it was like, yeah, like old school still works. Yep. If you see someone that you admire, call them. Send them a DM, email them. If they don't answer, email them again. Hit yeah. them up on LinkedIn. Like this is a world where if you want it, go get it. Like it's <laughs> sitting right there. And if you don't want it, you're not going to get it. Yeah. Like it's never been easier to be an entrepreneur, connect with the greatest minds in the world that it is right now. Yep, absolutely. All right. Well, Hey, we are, we've already gone through a bit of our, our, a lot of time here. So I'm going to push us on to the, to the modern RE, you know, the modern business, what you guys are doing today. Um, you've already talked about data. You've talked about artificial intelligence, which is not something that any investor on this show has talked about yet. Um, and so I, you know, I'm really big into data. I, I look at net migration. I only invest in places that have a positive net migration and, you know, Some marrying know. AI with real estate, um, it's just not something I've heard about. I want to go into it. Tell us a little bit what about what you guys are doing with AI and uh, and your real estate, especially on the an analytics side. And I'm, I mean, there's so much. We built proprietary technology. I have a piece of technology coming out called Transparency on June 1st um, that is literally going to reinvent investor relations. So all investors will be able to see uh, the renovations of an apartment, as an example, in real time. Okay but through a private mobile application. Oh, very nice. With stories, videos, multimedia, Nest cameras, et cetera, one piece. Collecting data on the apartments. Our joke at Rastigar is light bulbs don't go out in Rastigar buildings, period. <laughs> because we have chips and light bulbs. I know it's going to go out before oh, you do. Interesting. I know when you turn okay. on your microwave. Okay. So and, all- and it of helps. You all of that data, how many times doors open and close, how many cars pass by the thing, geofencing properties, and aggregating all of that data to make better investment decisions and create better community. So okay. meaning if, if I know that I built the swing set on this side of the park and over here through security monitoring in common areas, I know everybody is over there on the right side of the park and no one's using the swing set, I can use that data and extrapolate that data through different type of cameras, mechanisms, et cetera, to make better decisions and create a better experience. I'm obsessed with my customer. Mm. I'm not I'm not a mercenary investor as Jeff Bezos creates that dichotomy between mercenaries and missionaries. Mm. I'm here to build community, to build the future 
of what real estate will be for millennials and Gen Z. We're going to see the largest transfer of wealth in the history of mankind of the boomers going to Gen Z and millennials over the next five to 10 years, period. And so everything we are doing is building the future. We have 4,000 houses in production in the Austin MSA right now. We're breaking ground on seven different development projects right now in Austin and one condo project in Phoenix, you know, and it's about this post COVID world and creating a better customer experience that is safe, that's healthy and is, is, is marrying data analytics, the real data and the real estate purism with also the core values of this next generation, which is very different, okay. very, very different core values. And so, meaning arch- architecture wise, there used to be living rooms. Nobody goes to the living room anymore. They eat in the kitchen. That's very true. Absolutely. So redoing true. those. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just giving you random examples, but using all that data we're collecting from the apartments, from the houses, from the things to be able to better serve our customers for what they actually need at a price point that is effective. Got you. So um, if I can kind of just distill what you just said down. So it sounds like you guys are, you uh, what's the world? Internet of thing, or the, is it the internet of things? Internet Basically, of things, you're putting yeah. technology into- IoT. Yep, into your properties and you're using the data that you've We've been doing it for that. years. Yep, in order to define how you're gonna be um, creating the next the next property, the next uh, the next flip. And refining, the cur- and refining the current one. Yep. And so that way we can tell our customers, this is what your energy bills should look like. This is what you should expect for maintenance. This is the, you know, we, like we can give them more transparency mm-hmm. on what they're getting. Like, oh, we think the electricity bill is going to be 50 bucks and you get one for $380 or something. Well, if I know what the electrical usage is over 500 units within an area, I can extrapolate things. When I'm talking to a potential customer, I can give them real data. Yep. So they can budget better. So they can see if this is the right decision instead of, oh, well, I think it's going to be, I don't know, set it up. Like, what? Like, Yep, absolutely. So the next question that pops up to mind, um, you mentioned post-COVID world. And, you know, I've had on, uh, a few people on this show who've kind of, um, kind of looked into the future and s- thought about what would change after COVID, after, after, you know, doors open up, after everything returns back to quote unquote normal. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about how COVID is going to change the way we do business, the way we do work. Um, and so what do you see, you know, you have all this technology, you've seen things change. What do you see happening into the future? Um, once the doors are hundred percent wide open and we return back to normal, um, how do you see, especially in real estate, how do you see things changing going forward? Innovation, massive, massive amounts of innovation. Innovation or change, you could use either one of those words, happen for one of two reasons, inspiration or desperation. And this is desperation. More technology was built during World War II, which, you know, obviously our hearts go out to the tragedy of what happened in World War II, which is just beyond human comprehension of how atrocious that part of it was, obviously. But putting, you know, that over here for a second, with our heart and our prayers, we were forced to innovate. We we're yeah. still using World War II technology because we had no choice. COVID has moved the world forward and made things more efficient. So I'm looking forward to faster elevators, better HEPA filters, UV things, windows that open, things that should have happened years ago, population mm-hmm. migration trends into the Sun Belt of getting people out of California and out of New York yeah. into Phoenix and Dallas and Nashville and Raleigh and Tampa. And, you know, it was already happening. COVID just threw jet fuel on it. There's more startups happening than we've ever seen in the past 10 years. People are forced to ask better questions, which result in better answers. So I'm extremely optimistic. So has it sucked for a short term? And do those people have our hearts that have gone out and suffered during this? Of course, like, absolutely. But from a real estate standpoint, this is going to change the game for the better in every respect possible. Yep. 
And it's interesting that you mentioned uh, the Sun Belt because you know the numbers that I'm seeing um, and everybody that I've talked to, they've all exactly. mentioned those states. They said these are the this is where everybody's moving. Um, but and I never it's because the it. jobs are there. The jobs, it's all jobs. It's very simple. It's very simple. The companies are moving there. That's where the jobs are. It's fair weather climate, lower cost of living. That's it. Yep. There's no, it's not rocket science. Yep. Yeah. I, well, I said it because I never correlated uh, COVID with the, the increase in movement. Um, but it makes sense. Are you kidding because- me? Why do you think home prices are surging? It's because people are leaving the urban core and they want inherent social distancing. Yep. Yep. You know, makes absolute sense to me. Um, and actually, uh, Texas, uh, Florida, those are two big ones that I've been looking at. Um, which they're the is biggest. One- I mean, they're, the, they're, they're going to take, I mean, they're, I mean, Texas, it was a country would be the 10th largest country in the world on a GDP basis. <laughs> we operate that. at a $12 billion surplus and have no state income taxes. Wow. That's California crazy. and New York are bankrupt. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's uh, that's some pretty and and we're right in the center of the United States. So if you and so if you're right here, you could be in L.A., you go to Chicago, you go to Miami, you can go to New York, Florida. You're over here, which is great. I love Florida, but you have to travel six hours to New York, you know, four hours I mean, to L.A. Three. I mean, like it's not as geographically convenient. Central. Yep. Makes sense. Um, we're going to go into location in just a second, but we did pass the 20 minute mark. Um, so I got to push us into the quick question round. I've loved everything you've said so far. You ready to do some quick questions? Let's go. All right. Um, it always starts out and this is going to be a good one for you because you've said, uh, you know, you love books. I'm a big bookie too. So I like to ask two book recommendations, one for just general life wisdom, and then one for real estate specific. Um, think and grow rich by Napoleon Hill is absolutely at, you know, at the top of that list, you know, no, no, no question, you know, and real estate specific, you know, I know it's a little bit, a little bit cliched, but I really, if you're an average investor, you're just now starting in the market. If you're just a up and coming realtor, you're younger, you're trying to figure out your path you know, you haven't become an owner operator just yet, or and maybe you have, there's an amazing amount of wisdom in rich dad, poor dad, Robert Kiyosaki really lays it out. Again, I know that's a little cliche and a lot of people might've said that, but you know, I've actually read the book several, several times and I actually read it again about six months ago. And obviously we have hundreds and hundreds of millions of assets. We're breaking a billion this year, you know, and we're going into the billions, but it's just laid out so simply of understanding cash flows and things of that nature that I think they should do. But I recommend YouTube more. Like I, okay. I think I really believe you should go on YouTube, type in, if you're interested in apartment investing, just investing in apartments, how to underwrite apartments, how to invest in apartments, how do I buy my first apartment complex or whatever thing you could come up with and just watch videos and take notes. It's so simple and it's free. Absolutely. And I do it. I do it. I watch YouTube, watch great TED talks. Like it's, it's there. Like it's like, it's all on the internet. Like, and it's free. I didn't have that growing up. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, even podcasts like this um, or, or anybody's podcast on real estate, it's all well, But you have to know your learning modality. I'm a reader and that's my learning. Some people are visual learners. Some people are auditory. You have to have some self-awareness around how you learn and find that modality because you might not want to read rich dad, poor dad, but you do the audiobook. I don't know. I'm just speaking out loud. Um, but you need to know what your lang- what your learning mechanism is. And once you understand that, it'll help you tremendously. Exactly. And rich dad, poor dad. I mean, obviously you're not the first person to recommend that, but it is a great recommendation. Um, I, told you you- cli- I told you it's cliche, but, but I yeah. read it again recently. So it was at the top of my head. I was like, yep. wow, this really made this simple just to, grasp your head around why we do this and why it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And I, that's actually a good way to put it. It's not going to tell you what to do. It's not going to tell you, um, you know, the steps you need to take, but it'll tell you why you need to do it. Um, and I think it's a great, and, 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 and what, and why it's, why it could be important for you. Yep, exactly. All right. So moving on. Um, oops, I lost my place. All right, there we go. So if you could go back to the Ari who uh, didn't have any experience in real estate, you know, he was still looking at his path forward. His dad wanted him to be a lawyer. Um, go back to him, look him in the eye, 
shake his hand and give him one piece of advice moving forward? Be patient. Patience. Ooh, that's a good one. Be, be, be patient. It's all going to happen for you, bud. I love you. I like it. All right. So if um, we all have strengths, um, you know, this is an opportunity for you to show us your strength. Um, what is the one thing that you feel you specifically are exceptional at? What's your Superman strength? My Superman strength. I think people connecting with people and building true, authentic relationships and having the discernment to know if this person is someone that I understand that we share common core values and emotional, the emotional intelligence to be able to sit with somebody, connect with them and understand whether or not I have a genuine connection with them and that we share similar core values um, to be able to do business together or whatever it is we're working on, whether it's a vendor. Um, I think that that for me is something that um, I think I do pretty, pretty well because I, I just want to do business with people that I don't share core values with. I have, I have a no asshole policy. I'm right there with you, man. And so for me, I think if I had to say one thing that that's really what it is, is that is, the, is really being a people person and, yep. and loving people and getting to hear their stories and seeing if it integrates with mine and seeing if there's a Venn diagram and if there's a win, di a win, win, between the two of us. And if we could communicate well, effectively, we have the same love languages and can we, you know, do we share those commonalities or not? Yep. Good judge of character is so important, especially when it comes to real estate, because real estate, that's one, that's one part of it. That's one part of it. But I, I, yeah, relationships, I think rule the world. And that's actually a chapter in my book is relationships rule the world. Perfect. Uh, moving on. And this one is about habits. Habits underlie all of our lives. Um, so if you could point to one habit in yours that you feel has contributed the most to your overall happiness, health, well-being, success, um, what would that be? Transcendental meditation. Ooh, nice. I like it. Transcendental meditation or TM for short. Everybody listening to this, if you take nothing away else from this call, go to a local TM center, transcendental meditation, Google it, look it up, take the class, and it will affect, positively affect every area of your entire life. I'll second that one too. All right, Ari, um, that gets us through the quick question round. We have one last question. Um, you've given everybody listening, watching a lot to think about. I'm sure people out there want to reach out, hear about your book. Um, what is the best way for people to get in contact with you? Uh, you just go to at Rastigar on Instagram. All right. At or Ross. you can go or at Rastigar, which has okay. been up there on the screen the whole time. They could just read the Rastigar at Rastigar or just Google my name. You can just Google Ari Rastigar and you can find me in, like this. It's not, it's not hard. You know, I write, have a column in Forbes that I write for, you know, every month. We've been in every major publication that there is. It's not hard to find me if you want to find me. Perfect. And that is R-A-S-T-E-G-A-R. So if you want to get in contact with Ari um, I will put that in the show notes as well. Just click a little more in the description. It'll pop down the full yeah. description and in there you'll be able to find that link. Yeah. And you can put the out. website there if you want to, you know, at, it's just at, it's just www.rastigarproperty.com. Perfect. Awesome. Well, Hey Ari. It Thanks is buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for hopping. I on. enjoyed it very much. Thank you so much. Y'all have a blessed day. For everybody who's here with us today. Thank you guys for showing up. You are the reason that we do this as always. So we appreciate having you here. If you have any questions whatsoever, reach out to me, Gabe at the real estate investing club.com. Other than that, hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic week. Keep rocking real estate. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode as much as I enjoyed putting it on and were able to pull some actionable advice that you can apply in your own investing today in the field. Before you go, we have a gift for you. If you're a new investor looking to get started or an established investor looking to invest, take your investing to the next level. I've created an ebook just for you available on our website. This ebook ebook will cover how I was able to create both active and passive income in real estate with very little money to start with. In it, I will address the three most often cited obstacles new and veteran investors run into by showing you how to find deals that are actually deals 
how to finance a deal with little to no money down and how to exit those deals for maximum value. And if you get the ebook today, I am throwing in a bundle of bonuses, seven of them to be exact. The first one will be the off-market lead generation blueprint, which will take you through the exact systems and processes we use to generate off-market leads like like clockwork, which is the most important skill when it comes to creating wealth in real estate. The second bonus is the A to Z REI systems and vendors guide, which will allow you to peek under the hood of our business and see the exact tools, systems, and even the vendors we use to see the success that we do. And the third bonus is the top 100 best performing keywords pack, which is which will give you the exact keywords we use to target motivated sellers online using PPC ads. The fourth bundle is, or the first fourth bonus is our contracts bundle for wholesaling and renting real estate, which will give you access to all the contracts we use in the field to execute all different types of transactions. After that is the investors quick analysis calculator and offer tool, which will allow you to quickly calculate whether a deal is an actual deal and will allow you to create an offer automatically with, from those calculations. This is a lot of uh, a lot of bonuses that I said. I'm just going to keep going down the list. Number six is the investor's daily success tracker, which is a tracker you can use to ensure you are taking the right actions day in and day out to reach your financial goals in real estate. And the last bonus is the wholesalers template for quick assignment cash, which will give you the templates we use to present our wholesale deals professionally and efficiently to our buyers. Whew, that is a bundle. So it's a mouthful. You get all of those bonuses for free when you download the ebook. All we charge is the admin cost to run the show. So if you're interested in the ebook and the bonus bundle, head on over to the website at therealestateinvestingclub.com. Click on get the ebook bundle at the top of the page to take advantage of that deal. And with that said, I hope you have a fantastic day and even better week. Keep rocking real estate. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.